In the tumultuous period of Idi Amin's rule in Uganda, high-ranking officials were notorious for abusing their positions for personal gain and engaging in criminal activities that instilled terror throughout the nation. One of the most infamous among them was Lieutenant Colonel Isaac Moliamangu, a brutal figure who commanded immense power and showed unrestrained ruthlessness. Moliamangu's story is emblematic of the violent and corrupt practices of Amin's regime, a government characterized by authoritarianism, oppression, and an insatiable appetite for wealth at the expense of the Ugandan people. A soldier's rise in a dictator's Uganda, Malia Mungu, a trusted confidant of Amin, was among the key military leaders in the Uganda army during Amin's presidency from 1971 to 1979. He held a powerful sway over others within Amin's inner circle and across Uganda's administrative apparatus. Malia Mungu's influence and notoriety stemmed from his unwavering loyalty to Amin, his sadistic inclinations, and his constant abuse of power. Malia Mungu's rise in the military was rapid, as Amin needed officials who were ruthless and unhesitatingly loyal to enforce his increasingly draconian policies. Malia Mungu fit the profile perfectly. He played a critical role in executing Amin's most infamous orders, such as the purge of political opponents and the expulsion of Ugandan Asians, which would have far-reaching consequences for Uganda's social and economic stability. His unchecked authority contributed to an atmosphere of fear within the Ugandan government. Where even Amin's closest aides could suddenly find themselves at risk of persecution, the Asian expulsion and wealth redistribution. One of Amin's most infamous and consequential policies was the expulsion of Asians from Uganda in 1972. The decision not only shocked the world but also reshaped Uganda's economy and society. This sudden exodus of roughly 50,000 Ugandan Asians, many of whom were prominent figures in commerce and industry, led to an economic vacuum that Amin hoped to fill by redistributing their wealth to native Ugandans. Both the lofty promises of economic rebalancing were, in practice, a smokescreen for a far more self-serving agenda. Officials like Moliamangu exploited the policy to enrich themselves, taking over the seized businesses, properties, and assets left behind. Malia Mungu, as a member of the committee overseeing the distribution of Asian wealth, used this role for his own benefit. Instead of ensuring fair and equitable distribution, he acquired massive amounts of property and resources, furthering his personal wealth at an unprecedented scale. His actions went largely unchecked, as Amin's administration tolerated and even encouraged such corruption, provided that his loyalists continued to support his dictatorship. Moliamangu's role in the redistribution effort epitomized the regime's culture of exploitation and greed, as well as the suffering it caused to countless Ugandans. The coffee smuggling empire, Moliamangu's influence extended far beyond land and property redistribution. Uganda, with its vast coffee plantations, was a significant coffee exporter in East Africa. However, corrupt officials, including Moliamangu, capitalized on this national resource for their own profit. Using his authority, he established a vast smuggling network that transported coffee across Lake Victoria to neighboring Kenya. Coffee smuggling was a lucrative operation, lining Moliamangu's pockets with substantial wealth while undermining Uganda's economy. The extent of his smuggling empire grew so large that it eventually attracted the attention of the highest levels of government. While Amin initially ignored Moliamangu's illicit activities, he came to view them as a potential threat to his own control over Uganda's economic resources. In 1978, Amin ordered his British advisor, Bob Astles, to put an end to Moliamangu's coffee smuggling. Astles, a former soldier who had become one of Amin's most trusted advisors, was known for his influence within Amin's administration. But he was about to learn firsthand the limits of that influence when faced with Moliamangu's ruthless retaliation, the kidnapping and torture of Bob Astles, Malia Mungu, known for his merciless streak refused to accept interference in his smuggling empire, even from a figure as prominent as Bob Astles. When Astles attempted to clamp down on Moliamangu's coffee smuggling operation, Moliamangu responded in the only way he knew with violence. He ordered Astles's kidnapping and subsequently subjected him to a brutal ordeal of torture. 
although the precise details of Astol's captivity remain scarce, other survivors of Amin's henchmen described methods of torture that left lasting physical and psychological scars. The kidnapping of Bob Astol, a close advisor to Amin, was a bold move that illustrated Moliamangu's disregard for the authority of anyone other than Amin. It exposed the climate of lawlessness that Amin's Uganda had devolved into, where even the president's closest confidants could suffer violent retribution if they crossed the wrong individuals. Astles, although eventually released, had endured enough suffering to serve as a stark warning to anyone else who might consider standing in Moliamangu's way. Moliamangu's influence on sports and Ugandan politics, Moliamangu's ambition and desire for control extended even to Uganda's sports industry. Amin, who often used athletics as a way to promote Uganda on the world stage, encouraged military leaders to take active roles in national sports. In Elfu Moja na Mia Tisa Sabini Natano, Malia Mungu interrupted a general assembly meeting of the Uganda Amateur Athletics Association, WAAF, and declared his interest in leading the organization. His intervention left the members no choice but to elect him as chairman unanimously. Moliamangu's new role allowed him to dictate Uganda's sports policies, especially in the lead-up to the 1976 Summer Olympics. He took a keen interest in the preparations for the Olympics, hoping to influence the team's international appearance as a reflection of a means Uganda. However, his plans were thwarted when Uganda, in solidarity with other African nations, boycotted the 1976 Olympics in protest against New Zealand's participation due to its sporting ties with apartheid South Africa. Even though Moliamangu's ambitions in sports never fully materialized, his involvement underscored his tendency to seize control over any sphere that might further his standing, the legacy of Moliamangu's reign. Isaac Moliamangu's reign of terror exemplifies the unchecked power, corruption, and brutality that characterized Idi Amin's Uganda. His wealth, accumulated through seized properties and illicit trade, and his readiness to torture and kill without consequence, marked him as one of the most ruthless enforcers of Amin's regime. His willingness to torture a high-ranking official like Bob Astle, a close friend of the president, showed that even those within the highest echelons of Amin's administration were vulnerable to violent retribution. This episode symbolized the toxic atmosphere within the Ugandan government, where power was frequently wielded without regard for rule of law or respect for human life. The breakdown of law and order under Moliamangu's influence was instrumental in the eventual collapse of Amin's rule. Corruption ran so rampant that the Ugandan economy began to falter, as officials diverted state resources for personal enrichment rather than for the country's welfare. Uganda's wealth was drained, and its reputation on the international stage suffered. By 1979, Amin's administration was in disarray, weakened by internal corruption and mismanagement that rendered it vulnerable to external pressures. As Amin's rule ended and Uganda began its long journey toward recovery, the brutal legacy of figures like Moliamangu remained a stark reminder of the human cost of power unchecked. The reign of terror he inflicted, from the exploitation of Ugandan resources to the kidnapping and torture of political figures, left deep scars on Uganda's collective memory. His story serves as a cautionary tale about the perils of authoritarianism, where personal loyalty is valued above justice, and power is exercised without restraint.